Hello. Let's see where is my camera. Rut row, Scooby. I hope you can hear me. Maybe it's best that you can't see me. I guess. Apparently that is the case. Let's try that again. Everybody come along and bam. Picture. No. No picture. Why not? There's that. All right. Let's do this again. There's my nice little picture. And bam. Oh, all right. And well, what the heck? Hang on it, dude. Where is my, let's go to settings, let's go to camera, let's go to this one, and let's go to audio, I guess audio is good, look at that, general, camera, alright, not going to do that, this is the one. Now well, that, let's go back to that, and did it work? No, it did not. Control E. Hmm. Well, that just bounces it in and out, doesn't it? All right, I want to try this. I'll be right back. There we go. Wow. I don't know what it was all hung up about, but we fixed it. There's Roberto. Yeah. I had, it's a, everything I do is a little bit of a process. So I uh, got everything going. And depending on, if I don't start my camera in the uh, streaming software it shows my nice little icon picture up there and I can play the background you know loop music and all that stuff so you don't get to see me or hear me you just get to see that little icon and then when I start the camera then that's when you get the picture but apparently I had to go back one step further and start instead of step five start at three and come back up now we have it. I'm back. So, uh, as always, I seem a little bright. My, my forehead seemed a little shiny. Which part of it? This down here. Oh, this way back here. Let me turn this down. Because my kids will say, oh, we can change this too. Ooh, flesh touch. A smidge bit. A smidge bit. Oh no. 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 Stop that. What are you doing? Am I going to have to mute this thing? Hmm. Let's just try that. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. There's Clail. Howdy, Clail. Uh, as always, y'all may not see this, but I'm torn a lot of times between what I should put on the show. And I had an idea, and I was going to go with it for tonight, and I thought of a better angle for that one but it's going to take a little while to get it maybe up and running I'm hoping it will so we learned about yarn and making stuff when did you learn about yarn and making stuff 
<laughs> what the heck? Oh, here comes that, that big old noise again. I don't know why. Turn that off. Uh, so this was one that I thought about, and this is kind of like uh, my show that I did on cornhole. Because I had played cornhole like that afternoon just before that show, and I thought, man, that's interesting. How many rules, and how's it set up, and how are the tournaments played? So today, I was at work, and so I couldn't play croquet. But it came to me that this was one of these older games, kind of like the uh, show I did on recess games. So this was kind of a, to me it was older, because I played it as a kid. And I asked around, and some of the older people played croquet. Some of the newer people go, no. No. Okay, Clell. I'm slow. Crochet. Touche. Bobby Boucher. But it's not crochet. Or what's the cooking one? Uh, it's spelled differently, but I still think it's close to croquet. Croquette. Ooh, that's it. Croquette. So. Uh-oh. Quail's, Quail's hitting them hard tonight, and I'm just not, boom, they're just bouncing off, they're just bouncing off my forehead. So, but, I got it. But I didn't play croquet today at work. I just thought about talking about it, because it's a, a game that I used to play as a kid. I started to talk about, uh, yard darts, and we may look at that at the end of this kind of, gets quickly done, which as much as I just ramble on, it'll never get quickly done. But yard darts. And I'm not even going to look it up. I'm just going to tell you, there was never a kid killed by a yard dart. That I know. In my neighborhood. So there. They're not as dangerous as everybody led you to believe. Nor did I ever see or hear of a kid busting or exploding one of those clacker ball things. Now, I don't know. <laughs> Man, I got to take some notes. These are other good shows right here. Two hard plastic. They may have been acrylic. They may have been something. But they were hard. And they had strings in them. And the strings were probably, uh, what? A foot and a half? Some of you could get on the end of a stick. But mine had like a key ring. And you just pinch the key ring so the strings, how can I do that? So the strings hang off the end of the key ring. And that would let the two dangling balls swing around. And you would go, you'd go, dunk, dunk, and it'd clack, and it'd clack. And they'd clack, and then you'd go wham, 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 and they'd go up, clack, down, clack, up, clack, down, clack. Man, you get those things going. But they had a a rumor, I guess. Maybe it was just a parent's rumor for giving a good excuse to take those things away. That some of them were not exploding, but you know. Busting and flying apart and sending shrapnel everywhere on into the kid, which I, I could believe. Man, those things would clack. Yep. Uh, yard darts and they were darts, dude. I mean, foot and a half long, big old metal spike. Now I never sharpened them. You didn't need to sharpen them, really. You throw them, they were weighted. You throw them things up in there. Shoot. So. But croquet was something that, I'm so bored, what are we going to do? Get out and play croquet. And you'd go out, and I had you know, a couple of siblings. So we'd go out and set those things up. And I you know, had to come with instructions on a piece of paper. Because, you know, we'll look at how it's set up. And you'd knock the balls around and, you know, uh, Craig would tell you the, the funnest part 
is when you would, you know, you're shooting for a target. And we'll look at it here, but you're shooting for a target. It's a small target. So everybody bottlenecks into trying to get into this target. And when you touch and you have to move the other person out of the way because neither one of you can go forward when it's your turn, you put your foot on your top of your ball and you whack your ball and the vibration goes through yours and hits the other person's ball and it just shoots right out into the yard. And the whole point of that was to knock people out as far as far as you could out of the play you know uh i don't know if that's why they play tournaments we'll look and see what the rules are there's tournaments uh oh you know man you can have tiddly winks maybe i'll do a show on tiddly winks i think that's how you said it twiddly winks how do you say it? Twid tiddle tiddle <laughs> tiddly tinks. Tiddly winks. Winks. There we go. Tiddly winks is a competitive game involving four colors of winks. Each player controls the winks of a color, the colors being blue, green, red, and yellow. But basically, tiddlywinks is you got a small round circle with certain size. Then you got a bigger round circle and you put it on the edge of your wink and press down and it makes it pop up and you try to pop it into a cup. I bet there's a dang on twiddle, twiddledy winks tournaments, marble tournaments. I bet there's all kinds of tournaments. Anything that people play, it's going to be competitive. You got to play against somebody else, even solitaire. I tell my wife she likes to play electronic solitaire while she's eating her breakfast or supper, or, you know, doing that kind of stuff. I watch you too, but anyway. And the game on her tablet keeps track of how long it took her to do, how many shuffles, how many plays, how many cards, how many bleeds. You would buy, you would buy. I said, man, you ought to enter you a tournament. You know, there's got to be a tournament on. You know, who does it the fastest or who does it with the fewest moves or, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's got to be some kind of, even though you're playing a game that's designed to play against yourself and, you know, the deck of cards is surely, it's luck the way the cards come up. It's supposed to be, if you shuffle them right, it's luck the way the cards come up, but it's a lot of strategy on how you, I don't even know. I'll take strategy. Take that back. There's a lot of uh, observation. You've got to have a lot of concentration to see and remember, and you know which you know. Because if you're doing it against time, then you know you can't just go. Where can I play this card? Looking down through them two or three times and trying to figure out you know what suits next and what rank and all that kind of stuff. It's hard. Back to the original premise of this show, not twiddly winks and not solitaire or yard darts. Did we, for some reason, yeah, I had to do a careful Google search. Get parental, you get parental buffer zones on so you don't, you know, come up with something that's very unfamily show friendly. Of course, I always mark these shows. I've never, you know, except for the, what was it? The, uh, OnlyFans was the only semi risque show, you know, but I always mark all my videos not suitable for kids just because, just because you never know what a parent's, you know, <gasps> cocaine. You're beating the ball to death with the club. <laughs> oh no. You're whacking another ball through a ball with a club. You're so mean. All right. So let's get to it. Croquet. Do this. Share screen. Share screen. Croquet. Wow. And where are we going to go? 
Well, the first place we're going to go is all important. What? You got it. Stickopedia. Wikipedia. So, I was interested. Right off the bat, I found something I didn't know. Often called wickets in the United States. Wickets to me would be seem like that would be more of a UK and English term for croquet. I've never called it wickets. As far as I know, everybody's already called it croquet. So, uh, is a sport involving hitting wooden or plastic balls with a mallet through hoops. Called wickets. Governing body is the World Croquet Federation. So, let's look at, well, we'll look at the rules. I'd like to see where it started. So let's just scroll down through. Oh no, these are the different variations. History, here we go. The oldest document to bear the word croquet with a description of the modern game is a set of rules registered by Isaac Spratt. November 1856 with the Stationers Company of London. This record is now the public record office. In 1868, the first croquet all comers meet was held at Morton in Mash, Gloucestershire, and in the same year, all England croquet club was formed at Wimbledon, London. Hmm. So it sounds like, right, you would think Croquet would be French, but it says, I don't know where, Morton in Marsh, Glossenshire is, okay, it's Ceremony County in southwest England, it borders Herefordshire to the northwest and Worcestershire to the north, Warwickshire to the northeast and Oxfordshire to the east. Just where I thought it would be. Yeah, where I thought it would be. So this is all English. Yeah, but I would have thought French too. All right, so let's go down here. I'm looking over here. I'm cheating looking over here. I'm looking at French origin theory. Okay. Ground billiards. There's ground billiards. There's all kinds of little games played on the ground with balls. But French origin theory. The first explanation is that the ancestral game was introduced to Britain from France during the 1660s and 16 through 1685. The reign of Charles II of England, Scotland, and Ireland was played under the name of Palais, Palais Malay. Among other spellings today used Paul Mall. Cigarette brand. Dropped ultimately from Latin words for ball and mallet. The latter also found in the name of the earlier French game Jeu de Mall. This is the explanation given in the ninth edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, dated 1877. In his 1801 book, The Sports and Pastimes of the People of England, Joseph Strutt described the way Pall Mall was played in England at the time. Pall Mall is a game wherein a round box, a round box wood ball, is struck with a mallet through a high arch of iron, which he that can do at the fewest blows or at the number agreed upon wins. It is to be observed that there are two of these arches, that one is at either end of the alley, 
The game of mall is a fashionable amusement in the reign of Charles II and a walk in St. James Park, now called the mall, received its name from having been appropriated to the purpose of playing at mall. For Charles himself and his court courtiers frequently ex exercised themselves in the practice of this pastime. Well, I'm telling you, croquet is not much of an exercise. So there's an Irish origin of theory. The second theory is that the rules of the modern game of croquet arrived from Ireland during the 1850s, perhaps upon being brought there from Brittany, where a similar game was played on the beaches. Regular contact between Ireland and France had continued since the Norman invasion of Ireland in 1169. Oh my gosh. At least one version of it. Rouette or wheel, was a multi-ball long game. Records show a game called Crocky, similar to Croquet, being played at Castle Benningham in County Luth, Ireland in 1834. Payday in decline. Croquet became highly popular as a social pastime in England during the 1860s and was enthusiastically adopted and promoted by Earl of Essex, who held lavish croquet parties at his house, his stately home in Watford, Hertfordshire, and the Earl launched his own Cassiobury brand croquet set. Let's see what that picture shows. Let's just look at a picture. Well, there they are. Look at them all there. We've got a big old mallet, and here's the wickets. So, no real set of where it came from. Nobody can agree upon where it originated. But here's something I noticed that was pretty. Look at that mallet. That is a modern plastic mallet that I just carbon fiber croquet mallet. Dawson high density plastic balls and cast iron hoop with clips. And that stuff's getting too complicated. And look, have you noticed this ball barely, I mean literally just barely fits through the two uprights of that, that hoop. All oh, the clips are for. I don't know. Maybe we'll learn about the clips here later. Now these dudes have got one set up here, pretty good sized, with the the game that I used to play when I was a kid had two stakes. Maybe we're just missing the other stake. But they had two stakes. Hmm. Let's close those out. Alright, so I assume the, the game that we played was made with wooden balls. I never really paid attention. They were different colors. I don't know for sure the mallets were, you know, wooden. And it came in a little carrying case, you know, in the, 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 we'll just call them wickets, the metal pieces, the two posts. And I can't remember that I thought there was probably four mallets. Cause then there are four different colored balls. Red, yellow, blue, and black. I think that's the way it is. Let's see what this, somebody said something. Oakley Woods Croquet. So we're gonna Robert, we're gonna go to not Oakley Woods Croquet. We're gonna roll over here. Maybe look at the rules at Wood Mallets. And then let's go. Where did you say that was? Oakley Woods. Oakley. Woods.
Oh my goodness. It's a it's a croquet store. Mallet sets equipment croquet balls. Oakley Woods Croquet. Shop resellers. I always thought one of the balls that we had were smooth. <clears throat> Learning Center. Oh my gosh, they got they got grips on them now. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Where's the history supposed to be at? Storage <laughs> Learning Center. Well, oh, the daggone second one down. 14th century France fashioned hoops from willow branches and used shepherd's crooks to hit the balls. Where did they get the balls? Now, see, willow branches, and you can use, you know, what did they use? Uh, shepherd's crooks. But where did they get round wooden balls? I mean, that had to be, you just couldn't go out to your, you know, your yard and find them growing on a tree. So it showed up again in the 17th century in Ireland. A toy maker took it back to England and became a sport of the upper class. Hmm. So it says, this one says it's in France. But it doesn't, of course, I guess there's not a lot of written history about games played, you know, in the 14th century. Right? And then not until the 17th century did it have a reoccurrence or resurgence. Hmm. That's interesting. But man. Croquet sets. Let's just look at recreational sets. Robert's got me off on a tangent now. <laughs> so now I'm reading the comments and I wish I had now. <laughs> Clell's got the Beavis and Butthead snicker going on. Ours are ridged and old and blue. You didn't want to carve your blue balls with sharpened knives. That would not be the way to go. So let's see. All right. I guarantee you my parents didn't spend $500, $400 on a recreational croquet set. What is the cheapest one? It looks like $399 was the cheapest one. And that used to be $427. How can you uh, extreme croquet set for four players? That's a hundred dollars a player. A hundred dollars a player. Standard carrying bag. If you get a wood case, it's ninety dollars. Oxford balls, standard. Sport balls. Everybody wants their sport balls. 36 inch mallet height. That's preferred. Handles. No grips. Let's see what grip cost you. What? Oh my gosh. Carbon fiber handles are $624. Ash with a, cus a cushion grip. Add $54. All right, so we got ash handles with cushion grips. We got match ball colors. You can have all blue balls, or all red, or all black. Let's just do match go. You get the standard 36 inch mallet height. We went with sport balls, which are three and five eighths inches, I guess, in diameter, and a wooden case, carrying case, not just the old bag. So we jump from. Want three ninety nine to five eighty four. Huh. 
Huh. Where is the croquet store at? It says you can pick them up. There's got to be a contact. Contact me. I bet it's in England. What do you think? It's powered by Shopify. U.S. dollars. If you can choose, well, I mean, just because you can choose different currency doesn't mean it's not in the United States. Hmm. Well, it's funny they don't show where it's at. About us. Let's do that. Oh my goodness. Look at that eyebrow on that dude. You see, that thing's like a wing sticking above his eye. Yep. Golf is expensive. You know croquet is expensive. Golf's got to be way more expensive. Way more expensive. You just got to have like 16 clubs. Big old bag to tote those things around in. And then if you got got that many clubs, you have one of those wheeled bags, even though you might do a golf cart. Uh, Oakley Woods Croquet. So, Brighton, Ontario. So, it's in Canada. But why does that eyebrow stick out so much further? Maybe we're just missing out on this side, on these left eye. Or hand hewn in that one. Wow. All right. Let's go. Where are we? Do, 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 do. Rules. How to play croquet. Main four versions of croquet. Golf croquet, association croquet, American six wicket croquet, and nine wicket croquet. I'm not going to watch videos. Let's see which ones we used to play. So when I was a kid, you put a stake at one end of the field, and then you would set up the wickets like I think there was so many on the sides, and then right up the middle, I think there was one. And you had to follow a progression to go through certain wickets before you got to go through the next one. So if you overshot it, you had to shoot back and then try to go through it the direction towards the pin. And then it was always one in front of the, the pin. And you had to knock it through and hit it. And then that, I guess, scored. I wish there were just pictures. Man. There's a lot of reading. That thing's got a lot of rules. My goodness. Let's do this. I want pictures, man. I want pictures. Let's look at Croquet Layout. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. It might just. Which one did we do? Ah. Is this what we did? I think we did something like this one. Annual Robotics Institute Croquet Tournament. A backyard croquet court doesn't have to be perfectly manicured long, but short grass provides the best playing surface. If you have a room, a full-size court is rectangular, 100 feet by 50 feet. You can adjust the size and shape of the court to fit the available space. For matches during the RI Croquet Tournament, Referees will determine the size of the court. Okay. See, I think this is what we used to do. 
except I didn't know, I didn't think there was two wickets at the post. So you had a post on each end and then, you, you know, had a wicket in front of the post. And then the rest of them were kind of set up a, a, an X or like a number five domino or number five on a dice, you know, an X with a dot in the middle. So you had to play, uh, yeah, a certain way, going up and hit the post and then coming back and hit the post. So this shows, I guess, going starting at the six o'clock position, going to the twelve o'clock position. You went around to the left, and then once into the middle. Then on the return, you went on the opposite side, and then once through the middle and back down. I think this is the way we used to play it, as I recall. Is that the Wikipedia? Wicket good. I think that's the, the song, isn't it? You gotta start writing those down for another dad joke. We're gonna do another, have to do another dad joke, uh, show. I put that out as a podcast and was listening to it. <laughs> uh, I'm, they just still just make me laugh. Well, let's see. Then there's scoring. Playing side, bonus shots, if I send a ball over the boundary, is there a penalty? No. Sending a ball out of bounds never ends your turn if the striker has another shot the turn continues. My ball hits another ball and then goes through the next wicket, what happens? If your ball hits another ball, you immediately earn two extra shots, unless you have hit that ball in that turn since making your last wicket. What happens if I miss my ball entirely on a shot? Then you get to sit down and have another beer. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not like you're, I could see miss striking it, maybe catching the corner of it, you know, and, you know, the corner of the mallet, the edge of the mallet. What if I strike my mallet into another ball accidentally? Wow. I don't remember there being so many rules. <laughs> I just don't remember being so many rules, but I'm pretty sure that's the way we played it. Laid out that way. Let's see what else we got. What's this one up here? This one is golf croquet. Golf Croquet Association in the United States. Oh man, they got lines and everything. Standard court for golf croquet is 105 by 84. 35 yards by 28 yards. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I wonder if you could put English on a croquet shot. I don't know. That's interesting. Hmm. We'll see here in the golf. They first six points, last seven points. Start out and go like clockwise into the center. But the last seven points, that doesn't make any sense to me. Where does this one leave off? 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So you, clockwise, you come back up through the middle, then you start counterclockwise rotation. Well, you got to keep up with your stuff. That's for sure. What's this one here? Laying out the lawn. Hmm. So this one's got one peg in the middle. Back, back, one back. Huh. And then the wickets are set up. I don't know. How would you describe that? Two on each side and then two in the middle. Wow. Wow. They've got that thing down, man. You'd have to have a pretty good size field to play some of these things. Most definitely. Hmm. That's pretty much. Hey, look here. Backyard croquet. I was thinking this is the style of stuff. <laughs> this is the quality of croquet setup that we had. <laughs> Discover the proper dimensions for a backyard croquet court, also known. Uh, as the nine wicket court. Croquet is a perfect backyard sport. It's fun, it's relaxing, and everybody's outside, young and old, grown up, and really enjoy the game. Yeah. Yep. This is the way, like I said, that's, I guess that's where that picture come before. Full size courts, 100 by 50 feet. You don't have that much space. You can scale it. Nine wickets, two stakes, enough balls and mallets for your players. Optional chalk, string, flag, or other stakes to mark the court's boundaries or corners. When I was a kid, you needed a corner. You went out and you found your rock. Or whatever, a stick. We used to stick sticks in the ground and say, okay, you can't go past this stick. That stick and this rock. And sometimes you just use a, a ball, whatever you had laying around. You didn't need flags. And we didn't know what flags were. Or don't go past the stump or the maple tree. You know? There's a guy pounding these. <laughs> pounding his steak with his mallet. That's not the proper use of your mallet. All right. Okay, a handbook of all the rules, strategies, techniques, and tips. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. Well, there you have croquet. Yep. The balls are the size of softballs, and the mallets are like wooden sledgehammer. Yeah, you shouldn't miss your ball. But, I don't know. There's a rule for it. If there's a rule for it, somebody's done it. Like I said, you know. You miss the ball, you ought to be set down, you know, have another beer. I'm sure somewhere, let's just take a real quick Google search on, let's see, beer croquette.
All right. There is a goal to be the last man standing. It's a survivor's game. Here how it works. Once you've hit the final stake, you can kill other players. Whoa. Don't want to do that. Beer croquet. You must have a beer in your hand if you are swinging the club. This is beer croquet. No two-handed sissy swings. Soda or water is allowed for those that do not drink. So, yep, everybody's, somebody's turned it into a drinking game. For sure, for sure, for sure. Look, a Budweiser ad. Oh, come on, man. I just wanted to see the picture. And there it is again. Why can't I see the picture? All right, we're going to cheat. Open image and new tab. See, look at that. That's all I wanted to see. I wonder when that was... Uh, Hmm. Budweiser. Oh, it's already blurry enough. Let me put these things on. Some sort of recreation belongs in every one of our busy days, but just some sort of beer isn't enough to make the most recreation. Budweiser and Good Living have been partners for nearly a century. The reason why? That distinct taste that smacks of quality in every sip. Live life, every golden minute of it. Enjoy Budweiser, every golden drop of it. Anheuser-Busch, Incorporated, St. Louis, Missouri. So, which one of these is the man and the, which one's the female? I don't know. Transgender. One of these has got to be. One of them's got to be. So, They've made it into a drinking game. I bet there's not that many rules in beer croquet. Well, they're playing croquet on a hill. I guess you could. All right. Well, there you have it. Croquet in a nutshell. <laughs> we talked about that playing smear. Surely you played croquet, though. I mean, we weren't that fancy either, but you had to have a game you could play outside that didn't cause bodily injury. And croquet was the deal. This one down here, so I'm oh, not going to get tied up. Not going to do that. All right. Well, any other questions? Any other comments? Been 49 minutes. I've just pretty much thrown that 30 minute thing out the window. So maybe if I can't get this other idea of mine to pan out. Next show, we might talk about yard darts. Yard darts. You know, I had another thing that was pretty daggone dangerous. Maybe I could do a show on cow tipping. Is it a real thing? Tell me, Clell. Tell me true. Is it a real thing? Can you cow tip, or is this another one of those snipe hunts? One of those snipe hunting jobs. I don't know. If there's supposed to be a real snipe. But, there's not one you can go out there and hunt in the middle of the night and push them into the bag. So, maybe next time we'll talk about yard darts. Hello, cow tipping. I don't think there was any other games that we played. We talked about those other games. But this one I was just thinking about croquet today because it was a gentleman's game. Yes, it was a gentleman's game. 
that we played. It was, I don't know, along, not at all similar, but along the same lines, if that makes sense, of, uh, cornhole. I was wanting to say toss across. Toss across was another game that we played. Well, they're sleeping. See, that was the whole point. The whole point. They sleep standing up. And so they're just kind of, you know, that's what it was always explained to me. You had to sneak up on them when they were actually sleeping so they were really relaxed. Now, I don't know. Do the cows stand up to sleep? So <laughs> human ones don't count. I just don't. Yeah, I never really thought it was real, but you never know. I mean, if you, I think it's just the way get people stomped on. Because I don't think you'd ever. I think cows lay down to sleep. I think maybe horses are only ones that stand up to sleep, and I'm not sure they do all the time. Stand up to sleep. All right. So we've dispelled one myth. Clell does not believe in cow tipping. Doesn't think it's possible. He's a naysayer. Oh well. Hey, there's one of those things I was talking about earlier. The key, oh, the key reading thing. The clacky ball, and you'd hold it like that, and then the string would hang out on the end, and you went. Maybe we'll look that up too. Field trip. <laughs> we ride at midnight. Yeah. I've got probably some cows down the road here. I'd say there's probably more out your way. But you got to sneak up on them, man. I don't know. The cows keep a sentry. Like, man, hey, you know, you stay up. You stay up from sundown to midnight. And then Ralph, he'll stay up from midnight to three. Then I'll jump in at three to six. Do they keep up sentries so that the coyotes don't get them? I don't think coyotes would mess with them, except for little calves. All right, everybody. Let's call it a done deal and plan on meeting up here Monday night. And hopefully, hopefully I can get together my little idea and cross your fingers. Don't hope to do nothing and never what? Never stick a needle in your eye. There you go, kids. All right. Say bye, everybody. Y'all come back now. You hear?